Okay, so today I am doing one of my absolute all-time favorite dishes. It is a vegetarian dish, and this time you're just gonna have to suck it up and enjoy the vegetarian element because it has a variety of cheeses. We're gonna use quark, we're gonna use ricotta. I'm putting some of this in it, and that's just to add to my vitamin B12 content. Uh, we're also using some chopped um, butternut squash. You can use chopped sweet potato, and that just adds to give it a little bit of a bite. It is a pasta dish, so I'm going to use these big shells. Now, if you prefer, you can use uh, like a cannelloni or something like that, but I'm gonna use these because cannelloni is a demon to try and fill unless you've got something that you can use specifically. For a bit of flavor as well, I'm also using pine nuts. And for the green brigade, we are using a leek and some spinach. So, of course, depending on your own tastes in garlic, you can add a little bit more garlic or just have the one or two cloves. I always load this dish with garlic. And finally, I have got some red lentils here behind me and we're gonna mix that all through with the sauce so that it just uh, gives it a little bit extra protein. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I have filled a pot with hot water, <clears throat> a little bit of olive oil and some salt, and I have popped these shells, some of these shells in. Now, what I'm trying to do here is not cook them because again, they can be really difficult to fill when they're cooked through, but just letting them sit in the, in the hot water for a while so they're softening on the outside, it just makes things a little bit easier for us in the cooking. We want the sauce to be uh, nice and wet so that it'll actually cook when it's in the oven. So I'm putting these to one side and I'm gonna show how to start with the sauce. So first things first, we're gonna do the veg. Now the leek, the onion, did I say onion? No, I'm gonna get some onion as well. The leek, the onion and the garlic and these um, butternut squash are all going to go together. We're gonna to add a little bit of water then cover the top of the pan and just let them steam for a few minutes to ensure that these are nice and soft. Now, if you want to go wild altogether and add in some chorizo, if you really can't do without the meat, you can do that. If you are vegetarian and you like that kind of smoky flavor, you can use a smoked tofu, which if I had it today, I would probably add, but I don't. So I'm gonna grab my onion. This is just one of those recipes. It's pure comfort food. I've been out on the bike today. My legs are wrecked, I'm tired, and I am just really looking forward to this. Um, it is a cheesy dish. Now, I do recognize the fact that we're gonna be adding lots of, um, lots of mozzarella or mozzarella and uh, cheddar on top as well, which is why I'm inclined to go half and half with the ricotta and the quark. So quark is, it's kind of like halfway between a Greek yogurt, uh, a Greek yogurt and what's the other one, and a cottage cheese. It's got that kind of sharp flavor, but uh, it's full of protein. It's really high in protein and it's naturally very low in fat. So um, it's just a good option when you have a dish that's got a lot of cheese in it. Um, I feel it's a good option to go half and half on. So. So nice and rough. So these are all going onto the heat together so I don't have to worry about anything. Now with this, slice it down the middle and the reason I say that is that you're going to be, um, again, trying to get those bits as small as possible to fit into the shells and I'm just inclined to find that they get too stringy when they're, when they're left in the whole circle like that. Perfect. So with the lentils behind me, I've used red lentils, primarily because they don't necessarily need any soaking. Um, you can cook them in 10 minutes. If you didn't have any red lentils, of course you could use something like chickpeas for this dish. Um, or you can get a tin of, um, of green lentils. I've used green lentils in this dish as well before. So if you may have seen this before, you may not. When it comes to trying to skin a garlic um, clove, I was gonna say clove, put the flat part of the blade on, press down, uh, it'll squash it, 
take off the rough end and it should just peel back and all the skin will fall off instead of making a huge effort so i'm going to get a little bit of oil on top of this and we're going to get that frying up straight away okay so what i'm going to do now is just run your hands over i'll show you here run your hands through these big uh, shells because if you don't they'll start to stick together once they start to soften they're in the hot water that's why I add a little bit of oil because it just helps to prevent them sticking together so and I'm going to keep those in there for another little while okay those are starting to soften they smell absolutely glorious so at this point I'm going to put in my butternut squash and again when this starts to cook it just breaks down it gives it a beautiful texture just really creamy and lovely and I'm going to toast these guys as well but I'm going to leave these till last because I don't want them to burn now I'm lucky enough to have a dad who absolutely loves growing things in my garden so I've got some fresh um, oregano here uh, the slugs ate my regular thyme I only have lemon thyme left so uh, unfortunately, first word problems, had to buy some regular thyme. So I'm going to put a pinch of regular thyme in and I'm going to chop this much oregano or oregano, whatever, whatever way you pronounce it. And I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of uh, onion powder as well. Robbie, would you let clues in the back door, love? Thank you. So the onion powder is going in now as well. Now, if you wanted to, if you like um, a little bit of a bite in your Italian dishes, you could add in some chili. That's Clusa who wanted to come in. She can smell the food that's cooking now and wants part of the action. Um, but I, I prefer not to actually. Uh, I prefer not to have a bite in Italian food. I like it just as it is now. So the next thing we're going to do is just add in a big punch of spinach, but we're going to wait until the stuff here has started to caramelize down a little bit. Okay, so that is all softened. I'm going to now add in my big handful of spinach. And as you know, once spinach is heated, it just wilts down. So I'm going to add my pine nuts now and what I'm going to do is just move everything in the pan over to the side. As you can see, I have taken my shells out of the water and put them in a dish. We're going to fill those in just a moment. So just to show you here, this is my mix. Okay, so everything is starting to wilt down there. I'm going to push the mix over to the side. And I'm going to add in a good portion of those pine nuts. And again, it's about texture. When you're having a meal, so about a third of the pan there, pine nuts. Uh, when you're having a meal, you want to experience those different textures as well as the different flavors. And that's what makes it so delicious. So while I'm waiting for those to finish, I have added uh, the red lentils and the tomato passata together. So I've got quite a big dish of that there. And I'm going to start getting my quark and ricotta ready. This is starting to caramelize now, so that's the important thing. When you're ready to actually take it off the heat, turn it right up for a moment. That's when you're gonna add your, whatever, your uh, liquid aminos. You could even add a little bit of beef stock if you wanted to. Um, again, I'm gonna add my dash of tamari because I'm not using salt. Don't forget to season it. I need, you're gonna season with black pepper and um, a bit of tamari. Now what you could do here as well is add a dash of white wine. I might just do that. And that is going to deglaze the bottom of the pan. So what I mean by that is when you have that beautiful blackened caramelized juice from the vegetables and the bottom of the pan along with the tamari, if you add a white wine to that it just gathers all that delicious caramelization and mixes it through into the food. 
Okay, so this is my pan. You can see here some bits, whoops, some bits are stuck to the bottom there. So that's where I'm going to just add a little bit of white wine. I'm gonna have a glass of that myself in a minute. And just allow all of that to come together. Now, when we are using these cheese products, I'm inclined to take them off the heat. Uh, I use, sometimes in a dish like this, if, if you're using a cream, I use, um, I might have some actually. Now, not an ad for Avonmore, but um, the cooking cream that Avonmore do isn't inclined to split. And I did, I think probably about 18 months ago, I did a promotion with them and was introduced to this and I've been using it ever since. And it's got about 50% less fat than regular cream. So if you are looking to make a creamy sauce for pasta or anything like that, that's my go-to. The point I was going to make is that these things can split if you put them on too high a heat. So I, I don't make a well, I don't allow them to come in direct contact with the pan. I just flatten down the mix, as you can hopefully see there. And I'm going to add all this in. And I'm going to add in a tub of ricotta as well. I just love ricotta. I'm just going to give that a mix. And just fold it in. Because we don't want that, as I said, to um, split. So all we're going to do from here is add in my... Um, what's it called? Nutritional yeast. That's kind of, some people say it has a cheesy flavor. It doesn't have a cheesy flavor unless you're talking about like a Yardsburg cheese. It has a kind of um, a nutty flavor, I suppose. Uh, and again, it just gives it a beautiful texture. So what we're going to do from here is add a good punch of black pepper and then we're going to start filling these shells. 